Imagine starting your work with 30% of your brain already off. Well, according to some research, that is the case with most entrepreneurs. Why? Because they're paying a huge performance tax that goes beyond just being distracted or feeling tired or motivated. No, this is a cognitive burden that permanently damages their ability to think, execute, and perform. And in my work with six, seven, eight figure entrepreneurs, I've noticed that success really isn't about IQ, talent, or hard work. It really is about optimizing your performance and showing up at your best every single day. This video is about 20 specific interventions that you can do today that is going to help you optimize your attention, time, energy, and leverage. If you don't apply this, it's going to be like working with one hand tied behind your back, especially given the case that if we are able to train our clients to become three times more productive. So just by implementing this, not only are you going to reverse that performance tax, but also start to become consistently higher performing, which is going to have an incredible impact in your business. Welcome back, my name is Castillo, founder of Submaster Performance Institute for Founders. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any of the juicy stuff we publish every single week. And everything starts by understanding your brain for what it is, like a high performance, car able to really show up at peak potential every single day and if you cannot do that it's because you have interferences with said potential just like in the case of a high performance tax it doesn't matter what is the raw power of the engine what is your potential what matters is the power that hits the road so if you're showing up with a lot of cognitive burden limiting your ability to focus execute and perform it's like driving with your handbrake on you can still move forward but at a high Cost. And the performance tax is the combined cognitive burden of all of these little interferences that are hurting your ability to think, execute, and perform. And when we work with our clients, we typically break those down in four pillars. Those that affect their attention, those that affect their time, those that affect their energy, and those that affect their leverage or prioritization. And I'm going to be sharing with you 20 specific things you can change today or skills that you can start training that is going to have an incredible impact on your overall performance and results. So the first block is about your attention. So there's five things that I typically help our clients really doubt. So the first thing we got to do is we got to remove all digital distractions from the workplace in which we typically do work. And that means that your phone has to be out of sight and out of mind while you are working. Which leads me to idea number two, which is what I call deep work defense. Once you settle on a task, you must absolutely defend the first 15 minutes because that is the time that typically takes the brain to actually focus. So most people, when they get distracted, they get distracted within the first 15 minutes of going into a new task. You're able to consistently focus for those 15 minutes, then the rest of your work session will go just well. Then skill number three is workplace optimization. See, your mind is constantly scanning your environment, looking for threat. That is not something you can change because it is evolutionary encoded. So the cleaner and the more tidy and organized your workspace is, the higher your cognitive per Format, which is me to idea number four, which is training your focal muscle. See, as you get good at consistently working up your focus capacity, you're going to be retraining just like you were to the gym. But if you go overboard too soon, if you try to focus for two hours, if you have never been able to focus for longer than 10 minutes, you're going to burn out. So this is also a core skill, is building your focus muscle up. If you now you're able to focus for 15 minutes, then try 20 minutes and then take a rest. And you're able to do 20 minutes, then try 25 minutes. And the higher limit is typically 90 minutes, which is one full ultradian cycle, which is a natural cycle that our brain follows for focus. And then it's core skill number five is anti-multitasking, as I call it. See, the brain is constantly looking for threats, as we just discussed, and you're going to be naturally wired to do things that seem more interesting than the ones that you're absolutely committed on doing. The problem with that is that every time you get distracted, it takes between 15 to 25 minutes to get back on track. If you get distracted too many times during the same day, you eventually end up doing absolutely nothing. So anti-multitasking asking is an absolutely crucial skill to also develop. So as we said, we remove distractions, we commit to really powering through the first 15 minutes, we design the workplace to help us with our focus, we build our focus muscle progressively, and finally we avoid distractions. And before we go into the next pillar, rate yourself. How good are you in managing your attention? One to 10. If you find this is a weak spot, I would absolutely recommend you start implementing these practices. Then block number two is how to optimize your energy. And it all starts, of course, you guessed it, by nailing your sleep. You absolutely must have elite sleep. That doesn't necessarily mean that you have to spend eight hours in bed. It really depends on your ability to have at least one hour of deep sleep and one hour of REM sleep every single night. That is the 
two KPIs that I typically like to see in my clients. Deep sleep typically is what recharges the muscle, like the body, and REM sleep is what recharges the brain. If you're able to hit one hour for both, you are golden. Then skill number two is what I call task timing relationship. See, we go through ebbs and flows of energy within the same day. And if we're trying to push against our natural cycles, we create unnecessary stress and cortisol in our system, eventually leading to burnout. So task timing means that we understand what are the periods of peak energy and we align the most important task with those moments in which we are peak energy. If for whatever reason we find our focus dwindling, we can leverage skill number three, which is a strategic breath work. So I like to use breath work to either arouse myself when I'm feeling sleepy or chill when I'm overexcited because I'm about to jump on stage or do something that creates unnecessary anxiety or fear of failure. I use breathing to calm myself, which also leads me to skill number four, which is a strategic recharging. As I was saying, our energy goes through ebbs and flows. So every 90 minutes, ideally, we will have a rest and recovery time, a time slot in which we do not check our phone, we do not check email, we do not do anything with the screen, we just let our brain rest on recharge. And finally, skill number five is to understand how to do brain fuel optimization, as I like to call it. See, a drop of 2% in hydration leads to at least a 13% drop in productivity. So being well hydrated is absolutely fundamental for productivity. So I always recommend our clients to at least drink three liters of water every single day, one and a half liters in the morning and one and a half liters after lunch. And that keeps their brain sharp enough. Before we go into the next pillar, rate yourself. How well are you sleeping? How well are you optimizing your work based on your own natural rhythms? How well are you hydrating yourself? Are you using any sort of breath work to strategically rest on recharge? And are you actually stopping work every 90 minutes to give your brain your ability to encode information and overall rest and recover? These practices are guaranteed to boost your energy management. It's going to lift part of that performance task. So raise yourself one to 10. How good are you at this things. Then pillar number three is time management, which in my view is one of the topics that is most misunderstood. To me, there's five core skills in time management that really drive 80% of results. The first thing we got to do is to time block. See, time blocking is in essence having a time devoted to one specific activity, and we take as much time as we need to actually finish it. And we do not mix work, which leads me to skill number two, which is Cognitive load management. See, if you are, every type of work that you do has a different cognitive load. Writing emails does not tire your brain the same as having a conversation or writing a report or analyzing your ads or whatever. So a core practice of good time management is to bundle up and time block tasks that have the same cognitive burden. Which leads me to skill number three, which is rhythm building. And this is something I don't see discussed very often, but to me is absolutely fundamental, which is trying to have a schedule that is following the same rhythm every single week, because we can condition our brain to be ready to perform certain tasks at specific moments every week. So the more rhythmic our calendar is, the easier it is for us to really get into the work we need to do. You know, let's say that you do video marketing, you record every video at the same time every day, every week. If you write emails or whatever, you try to have set batches for this every single day or week. In essence, you try to do the same task at the same time every single week so that you don't waste that much time convincing yourself or dragging yourself to do it. Then step number four is what I call ring fencing, which is an evolution of time blocking. And I invented this term many years ago. In essence, the idea is that you time block the task for 90 minutes and you work against a clock, a timer, in order to complete them. That aligns with a natural energy cycle that we discussed in the previous pillars and is going to make you really effective because you have 90 minutes to finish a specific set of work that you committed on doing. And if you really want to drive better results with this, you can check your progress during the same task. So in the previous week, you're able to do a thousand words within 90 minutes. In the next week, you can try to do a thousand five hundred, for instance, and that will gonna test your skill. But in any case, what we can never do is deviate from skill number five, your calendar. See, calendar mapping is a crucial skill of any performers. For every single one of them, everything happens on their calendar. If you do not use a calendar as your Bible, then you're going to always have a problem defending your boundaries for work. As I like to say, if it's something is not in my calendar, I don't do it because my calendar is what keeps me effective. Now, before we go into the final pillar, rate yourself. How good are you at time blocking? Are you actually devoting just one task without getting distracted? Are you really managing your cognitive load the right way? Are you ring fencing? So are you using a timer to really drive superior efficiency? Are you protecting your priorities on your calendar? 
calendar so you can guarantee that your boundaries get respected. And finally, are you building a rhythm of results in your business? Are you working on the same things at the same time as much as possible to really drive super effectiveness? Rate yourself one to 10 to see if this is something that you have actual control over. And finally, the most important pillar, which is leverage management. This is the thing that really builds elite entrepreneurs. And to me, there's five core skills that really drive 80% of the results. First of all, is the strategic prioritization. See, most people just gravitate towards the most urgent task. And that is a problem because urgent seldom is important. So the elite performers, elite entrepreneurs, what they do is that they have a plan. They have a 90 day plan that they follow and they are working on the tasks that pertain to that 90 day plan. If something does not pertain to that 90 day plan, if something just happens and pops up, they don't pay attention to it unless it is part of the plan or helps the plan in some fashion. What I'm trying to say is that that avoids shiny object syndrome, time wasters, and any other priority that ends up not being that important. Which leads me to skill number two, which is fear leveraging protocol. See, we typically gravitate towards the easy work because we fear failing on the important work. That is a core insight to have because that happens to everyone. We typically tend to finish the things that are easier, that we have control over, instead of actually tackling the hairy stuff that really, really lead to better results, but we don't really know how to do it. So Fuel Leverage Protocol is aligning the things that you're most afraid on doing with the hours in your day that you're most energetic so that you can actually get that job done. Then the third skill is what I call feedback recollection. So at the end of the day, I train my clients to collect feedback on how the day went, what specifically went right, what went wrong, and how to improve the following day. And when you get into the group of getting data about your performance, over time, you become a natural machine at in proving, which is a core skill of elite performers. It's not how good you are today, it's how fast you are improving. Being good at improving is the number one skill that will make you successful, which leads me to a skill number four, which is routine optimization. So once you know exactly what needs to be changed, the next skill is to actually do the changes because there's a lot of people that know the things that are not working, but they don't do anything about it. The goal is to consistently become better, to make the necessary changes on your workflows, on your routine, on your management, on everything and that you have control over in order to consistently become better over time. And skill number five is systems building. Each system is nothing else than a series of step-by-step -step relationship that you can replicate. So once you have identified a best practice about anything, everything that you do, you just build a system about it. You create step-by-step -step relationships that over time someone else can manage for you. So those are the five core skills in leverage management. One is what is the strategic plan you're doing? How are you prioritizing based on the strategy? Then next, how are you becoming better by collecting feedback every single day? How you are adapting your routine your workflows, your tasks based on what you are learning. How are you managing your own mental state to avoid falling for the trap of doing the easy work instead of the important work? And finally, how many systems are you able to create every single week so that the following week is easier than the previous one so that over time you are consistently becoming better at your craft. So these five skills really are the 80% of leverage management. If you do these 20 things, if you apply them today, your attention, energy, time, and leverage management will skyrocket and you will be able to reverse the performance tax that according to recent studies has steals 30% of the average entrepreneur day. If you have a 1 million year business, it's like having a 300,000 task that you are paying every single day. If you want to have the full blueprint of how to become an elite performer consistently using actual science and proven protocols, check this video here. It's going to show you exactly how we do it at Self Master. If you want to our proven help to really become everything you could be, to unlock the elite entrepreneur within, book a call below so we can help you find the clarity you need to drive your business forward. See you on the next video.